welcome you to worshiping with us at First Presbyterian Church in Sun City, Arizona. We wish we could all be together worshiping, but this is a time where it's safest for everybody involved if we stay apart. So while that is happening, we want to bring worship to you by video course. And uh, Stuart has a few announcements to get us started. Welcome everybody, near and far. Uh, today is our second recording of the church service. The first one turned out really well, and this one will be even better. Uh, we encourage you to stay in your normal Sunday routine. Uh, get up, get ready, turn us on, nine o'clock, you have the three possibilities of watching. And Tom encourages you to uh, have a virtual coffee hour with him. Send him an email and he will respond to you with a link to it so you can enjoy that also. We will try to keep everyone up to date on our church services and activities. Everything is so up in the air and we have to be proactive in keeping everyone safe and well. We invite you to quiet your heart for worship during the prelude. Is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord that I seek after 
to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The hymn of praise is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Be our strength, be our peace, 
be our hope, be our security. Lord, we thank you for those who are working, uh, truck drivers and uh, um, grocery people and all the, the vital jobs that are necessary right now. We thank you for those who are filling those jobs, for those who are meeting the needs of people, nurses and doctors, caregivers, uh, therapists. Uh, Lord, be with these people. Keep them safe. Provide them with the uh, protective equipment that they need. We pray for our leaders in our, our state, our nation, and around the world as they make vital decisions affecting the health uh, of, of people all around the world. Guide them. Give them wisdom. Give them integrity in the decisions they make. Give them compassion. Uh, guide them. Uh, we pray for our economy as well as for the, the health needs of our people of our nation. Pray that you would have your hand upon that, and that you'd be at work so that we will rebound. We pray that you'd bring out the best within all the citizens. Uh, we hear wonderful stories and rotten stories, people sinking to lows or people rising to heights, and we pray that you'd help us to do the best that we can in the situations before us, not the worst. And now we join our hearts together and our voices together in the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be, be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our debts, debts as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine, for thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And now we have the joy of uh, some special music by Beth Neely.
A reading from the Psalms, Psalm 34, 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The prayer of illumination. Holy God, this is not the season of Lent that we have been anticipating. So much has changed, and so quickly, we can scarcely keep up. Help us see and hear you in the midst of the chaos. Let us know your presence, we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is John chapter 1, verse 35 through verse 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated, anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated, Peter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our nation is facing some great challenges at this time. That means that each of us is facing some significant challenges in our own lives as well. One of the blessings or curses of such challenges is that challenges draw us or push us back to what is at the core of who we are. Depending on what is at the core of who we are determines whether we will rise up to be the best that we can be or sink to the lowest that we can be, depending upon the strength or the instability of what is at the core of our being. Therefore, it is important for us to consider what is at the core of who we are and for us to consider how do we strengthen what is at our core. We were made by God in the likeness of God, for relationship with God. Therefore, one of those key things at the core of who we are is our relationship with God. The stronger the integrity of that relationship is, the better equipped we are to rise up to being the best person that we can be in the midst of challenges in crises. In the weeks to come, we will be looking at the person of Jesus in the Gospel of John as an opportunity for, for us to deepen and strengthen 
our relationship with God. We will look particularly at Jesus' personal encounters with people in the Gospel of John, in his conversations with people, and in the miracles he does with people. We begin this morning with the first of those encounters that John describes in his Gospel. In John 1, 35-42, we meet two individuals, Andrew and his friend, who is not mentioned by name, but it is most likely John, the author of this Gospel. The two of them had been followers of John the Baptizer, but this particular day, John the Baptizer points to Jesus and declares him to be the Lamb of God. This intrigues Andrew and his friend, so they begin to follow Jesus. Noticing them trailing him, Jesus turns to them and asks the question, What are you looking for? Andrew and his friend come up with the right answer to Jesus' question. They come up with an answer that leads to genuine discovery, rather than superficial information. They ask Jesus in return, where are you staying? They want to spend time with Jesus, for in spending time with Jesus, they get the opportunity to watch Him, to listen to Him, and to discover His character, to discover the essence of who He is. Andrew and his friend provide a good model for us. If you want to discover Jesus, the most important thing to do is not to examine a theological treatise about Jesus, but to spend time with Jesus, drawing near to Him, drawing near to His heart, discovering who He is. Indeed, that is what Jesus invites Andrew and his friend to do here. He says to them, Come and see. Who do you see? Or what do you see when you look at Jesus? Sadly, many people wanting to see Jesus have looked at perverted images of Jesus in Christians they have known. In her book, Searching for Sunday, Loving, Leaving, and Finding the Church, Rachel Held Evans shares several stories of people whose view of Jesus was ruined by those who were supposed to represent Him. One of the stories that she shares comes out of history. She points out, quote, likening their conquests to Joshua's defeat of Canaan, European Christians brought rape, violence, plunder, and enslavement to the New World, where hundreds of thousands of Native people were enslaved or killed. It is said that a tribal chief from the island of Hispaniola was given the chance to convert to Christianity before being executed. But he responded that if heaven was where Christians went when they died, he would rather go to hell. Another story is more recent. A woman identified as CJ shared with Rachel why she and her husband gave up on church. She wrote, We left for so many reasons, but the night we made the decision for good was the night my husband looked at our tiny newborn daughter sleeping in my arms and said, I don't want her to ever know that God, the God we grew up with, the one the, large, the churches at large preach. I don't want her to grow up with the crap we did. I want her to know God, but not that God, never ever that God. In the book Severe Mercy, Sheldon Van Auken comments, the best argument for Christianity 
is Christians. Their joy, their certainty, their completeness. But the strongest argument against Christianity is also Christians, when they are self-righteous and smug in complacent consecration, when they are narrow and repressive, then Christianity dies a thousand deaths. Despite the poor representation of Christ that Christians have given throughout the centuries, Christ continues to offer to people the strategy that he offered to Andrew and his friend. Come and see. That strategy worked for me. As a young person, I took a serious look at myself, and I took a serious look at the Jesus that I found portrayed in the Gospels. When I looked at myself, I saw a young person who was so anxious to fit in with others that I was often two-faced and insincere. When I looked at Jesus, I saw someone who was true to himself, who was genuine before others in all circumstances, not caring what others thought of him. When I looked at myself, I saw a young person who was never quite satisfied with life, always trying to find out what could make me happy. But when I looked at Jesus, I saw someone who was at peace with himself in the most difficult of circumstances. When I looked at myself, I saw someone who often struggled with jealousies, resentments, and prejudices. But when I looked at Jesus, I saw someone who was consistently filled with love and who unswervingly acted with love in his dealings with other people. When I looked at, my, looked at myself, I saw a person who was frequently consumed by fear. But when I looked at Jesus, I saw a person of someone who put love for others before self protection. When I looked at Jesus, I was drawn to him because I saw in Jesus what I want to become. What do you see when you look at Jesus? It has been written about Jesus 2,000 years ago. There was a man born contrary, contrary to the laws of nature. This man lived in poverty and was reared in obscurity. He did not travel extensively. Only once did he cross the boundary of the country in which he lived. And that was during his exile in childhood in Egypt. He possessed neither wealth nor influence. His relatives were inconspicuous and had neither training nor formal education. In infancy, he frightened a king. In childhood, he amazed Jewish leaders. In adulthood, he ruled the course of nature, walking upon the billows as a pavement and hushing the storm to sleep. He healed multitudes without medicine, without medicine and made no charge for his service. He never wrote a book, yet all the libraries of the country could not hold the books that had been written about him. He never wrote a song, yet he has furnished the theme for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never practiced psychiatry, yet he has healed more broken hearts than all the doctors far and near. Names of great scientists, philosophers, and theologians have come and gone, but the name of this man abounds more and more. Herod the Great could not destroy him, and the grave could not hold him. His name stands above the, upon the highest pinnacle of heavenly glory, acknowledged by angels and feared by devils. He was and is the incomparable Christ. What do you see when you look at Jesus? 
After spending the day with Jesus, Andrew hurried to his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah. When Andrew introduced his brother to Jesus, Jesus said to him, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is an interesting thing for Jesus to say about Simon Peter, because all that we find in the Gospels about this person does not match up to the description of being a rock. Simon Peter was impetuous. He was quick to put his foot in his mouth. He was braggadocious, but with a tendency to collapse upon his own promises. He is found lacking in the rock-like qualities of strength, dependability, and unbreakableness. When Jesus looked at Simon, he saw beyond what Simon was at that moment to what that man would become in Christ. Following the resurrection, with Christ's Spirit alive inside of him, Simon Peter became the rock that Jesus foretold that he would be. I love how these two pieces of the story come together. When we genuinely come and look at the real Jesus, we discover not only who he is, but we also discover what we will become in him. It is in coming to Christ that the core of who we are is strengthened, and we are enabled to rise up to become the best person that we can be. Please pray with me. Jesus, thank you for the opportunity we have to look at you. And thank you that when we look at you, we find these wonderful qualities that draw us to you because those are the qualities we want in our own lives. And I pray, Lord, that as we come more and more to you, we will become more and more that person that we can be. Grow us in you. Grow your character your likeness in us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to join us in singing together Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.
countenance to you and grant you peace, both now and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Amen.